Hi, I'm Jenny Robertson, founder of the On Purpose Woman Global Community and founder and publisher of On Purpose Woman Magazine. I'm here to share the speaker portion of our Connections After Hours gathering of the On Purpose Woman Global Community. Jean Wright speaks on presenting your package. Jean's impressive career spans four decades of selling for global corporations, nonprofits, and media companies. She's been recognized for excellence in customer service and has expertise in sales management. Jean just authored her first book, Selling Your Confidence, Forging a Successful Sales Career from Mint Cookies to Martinis. Her sales career journey begins with selling Girl Scout cookies. Jean speaks to women's groups and business organizations and coaches entrepreneurs and sales teams to sell more confidently. And you can find Jean's book on her website, which is sellingyourconfidence.com. And it is in the text of this video. So welcome, Jean. Thank you. And you are on when you're ready. Thank you, Jenny, for inviting me to talk more about selling your confidence and also how to uh, present yourself both in person and in your writing. And we'll get to that part um, in the second part of my talk. But I wanted to ask everybody, and I'm sure um, you have this experience, uh, when you go into a room and you see a lot of people, uh, it's a little bit overwhelming. And I'm thinking, have you ever? realized or ever seen um, people, have you ever seen a cartoon or uh, the bubbles that are over people's heads in little comic strips? And those are like the thought bubble. And the thought bubble are the things that we're thinking, but we're not actually saying. So you're going to this in-person networking event and your little thought bubbles coming up and you're think you're wondering, what am I going to say when I go up to somebody? Or what are they thinking about me at this very moment as I present myself walking into this room? Or how am I going to impress them about me? Uh, it's just all part of confidence and how we're feeling about presenting and promoting ourselves whenever we're in person um, and or when we meet somebody. And it's really almost instantaneous. We have to be ready to respond. Someone's going to come up to us and want to shake our hand. And for instance, you might get be approached by someone who says, hello, I'm Joe Smith and I am the president of Commerce Bank. And you think, oh, my goodness, this is somebody really important. I don't feel as important as that person, but I'll just do my best and say who I am. At that very moment, you have to introduce yourself as well. And you might just say, oh, um, I'm, I'm the shop owner. I have a store on Market Street. And not really telling a lot about yourself that you could really roll somebody over and impress them with that information. It's pretty basic. But when you don't want to feel less important, you want to feel as important as the other person, and you also want to put your best foot forward. So let's take this introduction back a few steps. And for the person who actually started speaking with you, let's say they should probably say something like, I'm excited to be the new president of Commerce Bank here in town, and I specialize in helping small businesses. Well, that's told that that right there has told me a lot about that person. And I'm a business owner. So my response would could be, I'm the proud owner of Antiques R Us, a bustling business in downtown. We are really popular among antique shoppers. And boy, I learned a lot about that person when they told me about them themselves with the colorful words they used and they learned a little bit more about me because I'm really busy with my store and that banker might want to help me do a little expansion with my business because he specializes in businesses so I really feel that um, you know if you use more words that describe how you feel or what you do or how happy you are to be there to meet that person. Just take the time to, well, not take the time, but use the moment to get to know somebody a little bit better by really showing that you're that, you're that expert. You're that person who is the owner, or you're the person who is the manager, or you're the person who wrote the book. Um, that's showing that you have an expertise in something. And it makes you feel a little bit better about yourself um, than just saying your name and 
that you just do something and not really explain more about it. So having confidence in your abilities means you want to let people know about you within the first few minutes of your introduction. And the same is true about writing about yourself. And I'd like to share the screen with some information about how we can do more for ourselves as far as um, putting, our, putting our information out on paper. A lot of times we're asked to submit a bio or some information about a story about ourselves. So whenever you, you wanna do that, you wanna put your best foot forward as well. So I'm gonna present a little, um, a little presentation here about uh, writing a bio, writing something about yourself that's a little bit more interesting than just your name and what you do. Because I think you'll know that that's what's really going to help you be more remembered by the other person that you're going to meet. So I just wanted to, um, sorry, I think I have to start at the beginning. <laughs> I, I thought I had this at the start, but I'm going to uh, get this back to the beginning. I apologize for this. Just one second. Okay. So crafting a confident bio. Um, and why do I need a bio? And what are the confidence uh, and skills that I need to show? How do I make myself shine? And how do I write it? Um, the reasons why you need a bio, and is everybody able to see this? I hope it's, it's coming over okay. Um, when you want to introduce yourself for a biography or a company website or nonprofit board member position, a lot of times when you're asked to be on a board, maybe in a local nonprofit, they ask you to submit some information about yourself. So. This is information that you can really build on and, and make yourself shine. College applications, interview forms, uh, a speaker introduction. When Ginny asks us to speak, she asks, she requests us to send a bio. And the more information you can provide in a very um, concise manner, but also interesting uh, by using specific wording and finding ways to uh, elaborate more on what you do so that people will find it interesting. It's, it's helpful to know little tips and tricks for doing that. So what am I gonna say about myself? What, what do I include? Whoops, let me just stop that here. I have this, okay. Um, you want to introduce yourself. You wanna talk about, of course, the company or the business that you own, uh, explain your, your role, include your professional achievements, discuss your passions and values, and mention your personal interests. Those are the basic things that we want to include in our bio. But you're gonna ask yourself, well, I'm not an expert. Like, why, why am I special? But you are the expert at what you do. And I think by doing a little exercise like we did previously before I started my, my talk, we all realize we are an expert in some way about our business and what we know and what we do. So most people don't know what you know and you possess knowledge and skills, experience and all those things that can be respected by others, which is truly an example of what an expert is. So make sure you give yourself credit for being the expert. Or you may think to yourself, well, my experience is kind of boring. You know, I'm, a, I'm an accountant or I, uh, I help people, uh, you know, put things together in a book so they're more organized or whatever. But your job title might be similar to other job titles you've heard, but with your knowledge and what you've done with that job is gonna be different from everyone else's experience. So feel free to make that position sound a little bit more like your, that you own it and that that's something that you have been able to develop over the years and make it your own and, and make that a story because you may think, well, I don't have much to tell about my story, but I think that you don't realize that you start with something basic and about your work and your passions and just adding colorful words and adjectives to that can really make it more descriptive and more interesting. So start with the basics, what do you include? And then start thinking a little bit more creatively about how you can embellish some of that uh, experience that you've had and all those job descriptions that, you, that may sound very average and make it your own and show people that you're doing something with that position or, or that um, 
job that you've had. So here's a sample of just a basic bio that someone might be writing about themselves. And you'll note that it's very basic. Deborah Jones is a CEO. She's a co-founder of her business and all of her experience. And she has franchised pet centers. She, her career reflects a demonstrated track record and has, she has corporate experience. And she's a Save the Animals Foundation board member and raised all this money for their campaign. And she's very into animal safety and speaks to groups. And she just, she's done some great things um, and it's very basic information. And I think the sentences just kind of tell you what, what she's like, but it doesn't really make me feel like I really know her in a more personal way. So let's think about ways that we can make this a little bit more interesting and add a little more punch to it by adding some special wording. So here's some things that you can think about when you want to when you want to consider writing a more creative bio, confident sounding words that you can use to intersperse with your experience, accomplished, successful, visionary, you're exceptional. It's hard to say sometimes that you're an exceptional person, but say it because maybe you you do something much better than other people do and why not say that you're really good at it? And you're exceptional. Um, you're dynamic or innovative. You have a strategic way of thinking. Uh, you influence people. You're proficient. And as we said, you are the expert. You're established, respected, talented, inspirational. My favorite one is trailblazing. I think a lot of women are trailblazers in many different professions. So use that word and make that really um, help you shine for something that maybe other people have never tried before, but you've done. So trailblazing is a great word. A leader, results-driven, prominent, skilled or high achieving. These are just the tip of the iceberg for some more colorful wording that you can use to describe yourself and your skills. So let's try to apply some words to that same bio that I read before. Deborah's bio about her now being more dynamic as a CEO, and she has years of expertise, and her career reflects an exceptional track record. And by the way, she has extensive corporate experience, and she successfully raised a lot of money. And beyond those remarkable achievements, she's been an advocate for animal safety. So this is just a little bit extra to just give it a little bit more oomph, but don't stop there. And I'm going to tell you all about something you hear about in the news a lot lately, and that's artificial intelligence. And for writing, let me tell you, it is definitely a tool that you should look into using for yourself, especially people who sometimes feel that they get a little bit um, stumped when they're trying to write something and they need a little extra help. So what I'm going to show you is how to embellish and, and use more, uh, you know, interesting wording, uh, words that can help you really shine by using chat GPT, which is an AI uh, tool. And all I have to do is put this same paragraph into, into the chat and tell it to please improve this bio with adjectives. That's all I asked it to do. The basic information is all mine, but the adjectives that have been added have made such a difference in how this bio looks. And if you can really kind of read it with me, you know, she is really shining in these all the red lettering that I have here shows the additions that we've made just from the wording that the chat GPT has suggested. And please understand that you don't have to use everything that they give you, but it's just a great tool to provide some new ideas for some thinking outside the box about yourself so that you can really um, you know, make your, your bio, your 
resume, whatever story you want to write about yourself. Just sound a little bit more interesting. It's still using that basic information about your life, your experience, and all those things you've done. So talking about being an academic powerhouse, that is awesome. I mean, she has another degree. Now we all don't have graduate degrees, but if you have certifications in something or you have uh, taken a lot of training for a specific skill, you know, say that you are, you know, you've far exceeded your goals and are now uh, someone who has the expertise in this particular area. You know, use the wording to help you shine. And um, I think you'll agree that a lot of these words really do uh, make a big difference in how this bio looks and how it comes across. It's, if someone's reading it as a bio to introduce you as a speaker, or if you are vying for a position on a board and you want to just just look a little bit better than maybe somebody else who maybe has that very boring bio, you can have a really nice presentation by using some tools that are out there like uh, AI, which is, like I said, use it as a tool and incorporate it as part of your editing and get some ideas from it. It really does help you. So some other personal tips that I have for social media is how to write. I'm not an expert on social media, but I can just tell you that you do are you are usually required to write a little bio about yourself if you're on LinkedIn, um, if you're an author and you have an author page on Amazon, they're going to ask if you could please put a bio in there. So you want to kind of keep it brief. Um, highlight your expertise and interest, you know, use those adjectives to make it more interesting so that you stand out, inject your personality and use some engaging words um, and use a call to action, especially if you have a website to have people go to uh, see your website or engage with them for other content that you might be offering like a blog or or some other type of interaction that you can provide. And it's really all the whole purpose of the social media is to make a memorable impression and provide a snapshot of who you are while you're also staying confident and authentic about yourself and your brand. So continue to use confidence from your experiences to write about yourself. Um, you want to sell yourself to the reader, use a phrase or words about something interesting about you that will stir up curiosity. Take the reader on your professional journey, tell your career story. You know, these are things that you can think about when you're writing the bio instead of like, I went to this college, I majored in this, this subject, um, I worked for three years at this company. Let's try to find different ways to express that. Um, but when they take them on your professional journey, maybe you can add a little bit more about what it was like when you were working in Chicago uh, for a certain company that maybe was some sold something unique or uh, had a uh, product that people would like to know more about. So think about some of those things. You have a lot of interesting things in your background, so you may as well use it to your best ability, show your confidence in all that you've done because you've worked hard to get where you are today. So why not put that down on paper in the best way possible? Um, and don't forget about your achievements and awards and all those other interesting details from anything else that um, you know keeps you busy like hobbies and family. People like to hear that. People wanna know that you're human, not just someone who works 24 seven and doesn't have any time for anything else. Um, and be friendly and use a really, the tone that you should have should be a little more conversational. Um, and like I said, have a call to action asking to connect um, if there's if you can do that with the type of bio that you're writing for whatever, if it's if it's something more personal that you need a bio for your LinkedIn or a bio for um, another more, I guess, engaging type of media. Um, a company bio is probably something on a website, so you probably aren't going to want to engage to connect, but you can still write about your hobbies or your 
um, interests that people will know a little bit more about you, that you're just not someone who works there and doesn't have a life. So please feel free to keep that information um, more uh, interesting so people will get to know you better. So it's all about just com feeling confident about yourself, writing um, and speaking about yourself in a positive manner. And you'd be surprised um, what a difference it will make if you just try to look at yourself differently. You could even ask a friend to write something about you. It's hard to write about yourself sometime and say, I'm great at this and I'm an expert at that. And maybe it would be helpful if someone you know can write a little bit something about you so that they can show you how they see you out in their eyes. Don't be afraid to ask a friend or, or someone else to do that for you, just to give you something to go on if you feel like I'm not really worthy, but they'll show you that you are worthy. It's, it's important. So um, I really appreciate the time. If there's, I'm sure there may be some questions. Um, I talk about my career journey in my book, Selling Your Confidence, and have found along the way that more women I meet, the more they just need a little bit more help to just feel like I'm the expert, I can do this, I can talk about myself in a positive way. And I hope that all of you feel that this is a helpful little presentation that I've shown you today. Gives you some tools to put yourself out there and put your best foot forward. Thank you, Jean. And if you, when you stop screen sharing here, I will ask everybody to unmute yourself so we can actually uh, let Jean hear our applause and our thank yous and our yays and all that kind of stuff. So great job, hey. Jean. Thank Woo. you. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't have my little presentation at the beginning. It was supposed yeah. to be, and I had to go through that. But, you know, we always had little technical things here and there. <laughs> yeah, it's been a night of that here. So <laughs> don't don't feel like you're alone in that. So I do want to thank you, Jean, so much for that. Um, those great tips. And, you know, what I really liked about, you reminded me of some things that I knew and had forgotten. And then there were some other things that I thought, oh, that would be a cool idea to add. So have fun with it have fun with it. And then if you don't, if you think it doesn't like say what you need it to say, ask somebody to read it and tell you right. what you think about it. And I think it's a great idea that you mentioned to have a friend write one for you or just tell you what they see in you, because often they will see things that we're not willing or able to see ourselves. So thank you again, Jean. And to anyone watching this live or watching the replay, if you'd like to join us for one of our nine free Zoom gatherings, a month or an in-person in Columbia, Maryland, Richmond, Virginia, or Tallahassee, Florida, comment below and I'll tell you how to do that. And you can also go to my website, www.opwgc.com and find out about the community. It's also in the text for this video, along with Jean's website, where you can find out all about her book. Thanks for watching, everyone. <music>